Hello everyone, I'm Phil and this is the March 2024 update video. Oh, it's going to be a busy month and uh, i got a few things to show you. Okay, we can get Apple products to work as well as they say they do. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, this is what happens when your dad's residential front loader, one of those high efficiency machines, uh, stops working. I never liked them. I've always hated them. They're junk machines. They don't really do anything but just wet the clothes barely and then wash it and it pretends to wash it. It doesn't really do anything. I've ruined so many pairs of pants in these damn washers because it doesn't put enough water in it. It'll put six gallons of water in it, and then by the end of the cycle, there's still clothes that haven't even gotten wet. So, and because most of the water is actually below the drum, about five of the six gallons is below the drum where it can't be used. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed it, but they're all practically the same. They're pretty junky. Still driving this thing, but for how much longer I am not entirely sure, is I've had a lot of problems. So in this video, I'll discuss those, but I need to get this laundry in before it cools down and then starts wrinkling. Yeah. So in last month's update video, I told you about this track bar and you can see it's in fairly painless i did run into a few idiot issues but other than that it really wasn't that bad oh let's see if i can get a little bit closer here you can see this you can see this bolt here it's got a flange on it with well, the, the nut does too and they're 21 millimeter when i went to do some prep work so i wouldn't have to go back and forth to the auto parts store all the time i bought a whole bunch of stuff like wrenches and sockets and stuff and made sure it had all the right tools. I started on this side first, and that was pretty easy. It wasn't really difficult to remove. It just, that came out, the nut fell on the ground, and this just popped out. When it came to doing this side, this was the one that was the most difficult. And I really couldn't figure out why a 21 millimeter socket or wrench wouldn't even fit on that. And wait a minute, that's not a flanged bolt. That's just a straight bolt. <laughs> so what happened? Well, that's a 22 millimeter bolt and the nut on the other side, and it's one of those Nylock nuts. That's not even the right one. So I'm gonna have to replace this, but this is yet another example of people who don't have the knowledge or the intellect to work on these, let alone drive them. This is just stupid. And I'm gonna have to replace that, which is really not that big of a deal, but now that the stent has been removed, I can at least torque them to 125 foot-pounds of torque with a lot less effort than, it, than I did when I, uh, had it, when I had replaced this with the stent still in my kidneys. Ooh, this thing's got a nasty oil leak. So this is the lower right control arm that mounts on a bracket on the axle housing. Same over there, you can see that. Well, these both have bushings on them and I actually feel them. I don't, I can't see it because this, this bracket's in the way. So I can't really see in what shape they're in, but they probably aren't in good shape. If these were replaced at the same time that the track bar was replaced, and the bushings on that one look, don't look all that great. These probably don't look great either, but I can see the bushings a little bit on the upper control arms on the left and right side, and yet they're not that healthy. So, I will have to replace them. This thing does handle a lot better now that the track bar has been replaced, but it still has a wobble, and it still shimmies on the road, and the ABS system goes off a lot when I press the uh, brake pedal, especially at intersections with stop signs and traffic control devices, other traffic control devices like traffic lights and stuff. And uh, because the road is rutted real bad in the center, this thing tends to want to pull to either the left or right and it causes the ABS system to go off. But now the traction control system goes off when I'm turning curves. And when it does that, it actually starts pulsating the brake. It was a very unusual effect and I haven't really even felt that before because it's never ever been, it's never went off. I was trying to figure out why this thing was pulsating so bad when I was turning curves, and then I saw the light go off, and it's like, well, okay. <laughs> so, 
I do need desperately to replace these control arms, but I've ran into a lot of problems getting them. I went through one vendor to replace them. I went and, and bought the parts for it. I, I, they said they had them in stock and it turned out they didn't. So it was gonna take another three to six weeks to have them delivered and they kept pushing the shipping date back because they can't get them in. They must be sitting in a container someplace and that's probably why. But I canceled that order because it wasn't gonna get here on time. So I went through another vendor who claimed they have some control arms that I could use for this thing in stock. And so far, I haven't heard anything back from them. And that's been about a week, a little over a week now. And I, I have no idea what's going on, but I need my control arms and they need to be here by Monday. If they're not here by Monday, I'm canceling the order because I won't be able to do anything with it at that time. I took a whole lot of time off and spent a lot of money. I mean, this is gonna cost me a lot of money and it's all, all gonna be thrown away if these control arms don't get here on time, but I still have to wait a while, but I'm gonna to have to wait anyway, because I am just so incredibly busy, it's stupid. All right, is the light still on? Okay, Apple, the light is still on? What in the world is wrong with you, Apple? That's why I don't buy Apple products that don't work right. Did it finally turn the light off? Thank goodness. Oh, let's see here. I got something to show you. I don't know if I've even shown you this thing, but uh, it's kind of cool. It's a Panasonic Toughbook CF54. And I don't know if I'm able to get the videos off of this thing, but if I can, I should be able to, to edit them in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I have installed on the computer. And I didn't have to pay anything for it, which is kind of nice. Why? College student. I may have turned it on like five, six, seven seconds ago and it's already ready. This thing boots up pretty fast. I guess it's because it's got RAM that actually works. Whereas the other computer has a whole bunch of RAM and I don't think any of it works. <laughs> but this is what this is what happens when you're really busy and you don't have time to do anything, is when you have a problem with the computer, it's just it has to stay that way because you can't do anything about it. And so I, I think the RAM sticks in that computer have been broken for at least the better part of five years and I haven't even touched them yet. Yeah, there are definitely more important things to worry about than non-functioning RAM sticks. But yeah, this is kind of cool. Let's see. Adobe Creative Cloud, let's see. Premiere Pro, yes. I don't know if this is gonna work really well on this laptop but I'm certainly given, willing to give it a try. And uh, what's really cool is I have a mouse that I can use on this. If I just throw open these doors and stick the dongle in it, then it disables this. I don't like these, never have, never will. Um, they create more problems than I am willing to deal with. It really screws up my, my papers when I write them for college assignments. I've always disabled all of them. 4K, well, I didn't have it set on 4K, but it's recording in 4K now, That not that it's really gonna matter much, but it does work. I don't see how y'all use this though. It's as, uh, there's a lot more steps involved in trying to get a video in the timeline than it should take. Uh, I've just been used to Sony Vegas, it's so easy. <laughs> Pretty powerful editing software, but I don't know if it's really worth the complications just to make a simple YouTube video. Yeah, this is way overpowered for what I need for YouTube videos. You know I do a podcast, right? If you look down in the video description, you'll see information about where you can find Everyday Tracks, my podcast. I'm on various different platforms like Spotify. I'm on YouTube Music, Google Podcasts until it's deleted in a couple of months. You don't even really have to go anywhere because I, my podcast host automatically uploads all of my podcasts to my YouTube account, apparently twice. So I'm always really close if you want to listen to my podcast. But I'm not on Apple Podcasts. It's kind of funny, though, because I create podcasts. Even during the days of the Podshow Network, when Adam Curry and a couple other people founded the Podshow Network to upload podcasts to, I was a part of that. But I never have been on Apple Podcasts. 
So starting next week, now that I have a way to do it, I'll be on Apple Podcasts. So that's something to keep an eye on for later. But I wanted to talk briefly about Everyday Tracks, my podcast, and tell you what you've been missing if you haven't been listening to it. On episode number two of Everyday Tracks, we had uh, I discussed a, a pretty severe snowstorm that we had and how we just don't have the ability to deal with it. Uh, the, the roads never got plowed. They didn't put any salt on the roads. They just kind of left them that way for the entirety that temperatures were below freezing, which was for about a week. And I was really just kind of dismayed at this. It's like, I really hate this crap. I hate this cold weather. I wish that Canadians would keep their freaking cold weather up there and quit bringing it down here. Actually, I think it's not really so much the Canadians, all the people from Michigan and Ohio moving down here, and then it followed them down here, bastards. <laughs> but I talk about that and just wanting to get away from this cold, snowy, icy junk weather. I hate it. And I'm a really outdoorsy person, so it makes sense to go to a place where I can actually be outdoors. So I thought about moving to Key West again. And I talk about that and how much it was going to cost to live there and how much I would need to make in order to live there. And the results were very interesting. So I do discuss that in episode two of Everyday Tracks. And then later on, I do the very same thing for another place. And so I'm always twiddling around with things in my head all the time and I talk about them, I, I think aloud on that podcast. I'm also discussing things about the Jeep as well. So. If that's something that you might be interested in, subscribe, follow whatever platform that you're using, and then I'll be on Apple Podcasts next week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Because I don't even know when anymore.